Evelyn and Paco ran through the forest, shaking with fear. She was trying to escape from the LRA, or Lord's Resistance Army, a brutal rebel group in northern Uganda. At just 12 years old, Evelyn was a child soldier. Abused in unspeakable ways and under the threat of death, she was forced to serve as pack animal and murderer, carrying weapons on her back by night and in her hands by day. After shrapnel from bombs shred the lower half of her face, she could barely eat and grew weak. One night, she overheard the soldiers discuss the next cleansing of the weakest rebels. She knew that by morning, dozens of children would be shot because they simply weren't strong enough to carry on. She fled into the night to escape certain death. When most people hear child soldier, they imagine a teenage African boy carrying a weapon. However, 40% of child soldiers are girls, some as young as four years old. Today, I'll be looking at the problem, the solution, and the benefits that would result if we helped and united the world together to fight the problem of child soldiers. So first of all, what's the truth of the situation? Since 1990, girls have served in conflicts in 55 countries. Right now, 120,000 girls are fighting in conflicts worldwide. These are girls that should be in school, have parents to guide them, friends, and a future. Instead, these girls are forced to carry supplies, kill and brutally maim others, and take drugs to dull their sense of morality. They're forced to serve as bushwives or sexual slaves to soldiers, and even complete suicide missions. These girls are living a nightmare. But what's the UN doing to help them? Although the UNICEF helps and reintegrates child soldiers, less than 5% of participants are girls. In fact, most of the programs focus solely on boy soldiers, such as the Lost Boys of Sudan. As the director of Child Soldiers International says, to make matters worse, when these girls return back home, they're treated as outcasts in their villages because of horrific crimes they committed. In a society where their value is determined by their marriageability and virginity, these girls are worthless. They sink into prostitution, homelessness, poverty, and even return back to brutal rebel forces just to survive. They once again become invisible. So what beneficial change can be made to help them? The UN needs specific programs focused on the needs of girl soldiers, including complete reintegration. Many need help with getting their life started with educational help, psychological help, and medical help, such as taking care of battle wounds, STDs, and even children they've conceived with the rebels. These girls need to completely start their lives over again. They need a complete focus that can get them back to normal after living through so much death. So Dr. Caesar Chalala says, because participation by girls in conflict is often ignored, few programs address the reintegration into society. It is necessary to specifically respond to their needs. So what benefits would result from this program, a united UN program to help these girls reintegrate them? Well, first of all, they'd have a life again, and that's the major point here, is they'd go from actually killing people, killing villagers, killing people they knew, they go from uh, being abused and having to carry supplies and take drugs all the time to actually having a life, to finding friendship, to really being a child again. Apio was kidnapped at seven years old by the rebels. Now, I have a little sister who's seven, and she's very happy and innocent. But at seven years old, Apio was forced to kill her own family members. She's finally rescued at 11 and actually turned back to her village. But her relatives harassed her because of the horrific crimes she had committed in her own village and her own family members. However, a nonprofit was able to rescue her and return her to a kind foster family in a different village where no one knew her. And at 14 years old, 
She goes to school. She has friends. And she has a future. She finally is able to be a child after so much death, after so many nightmares, after killing her own family, she can have a life again. These women can become powerful aspects of society. We need to take them from invisible people who live in the underworld society to people who can actually be powerful advocates for peace. These women know what it's like, know the worst of society. And just like Evelyn Apaco, after the rescued, and just like a P.O., after the return back to a new village, they can have a brand new start at life. Today, I look at the horrific problem of child soldiers. But I also look at the solution and the benefits that would result from rescuing these girls and giving them a new life. So what happened to Evelyn, the girl whose story opened with? Well, after escaping from the rebels in 2004, she received surgery in the U.S and now works as an advocate for peace. She raises awareness about the very girls that she was beside and the girls, the 120,000 girls still fighting around the world. She recently said, enough children have died. Everyone deserves peace in their lifetime. We all deserve to live life without fear.